Welcome everyone to another episode of the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Christians, and on this episode of the podcast, I am in Nebraska for our Collegiate Waterfowl Tour. I'm here highlighting some students of the, the University of Nebraska Lincoln Ducks Unlimited chapter. If you guys are watching the YouTube video, um, you can see us just hanging out on the couch. It's Saturday evening here. We did a duck hunt this morning. Oh, I actually, we did a duck hunt all day today. Yeah. <laughs> in all day, got a duck hunt. Um, and we'll definitely be talking about that in, in today's podcast. Um, and also some of their involvement with the Ducks Unlimited chapter that, that they've been running now for a few years. Probably talk about what's going on in Nebraska for duck hunting, what's it like hunting in general, possibly, and just what other whatever else we can think of. So uh, we got to talk about those Huskers, too, I think, right at the, oh boy. the start of this. Uh, I don't know if we game just start got over with. We can, we can hang out on that one. <laughs> Still feeling a little salty. <laughs> yeah. But this is, uh, too, I should should say, um, our Thanksgiving episode. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good time with friends and, and family. Enjoy some turkey, some mac and cheese, all of, all those good good fixings that are going to be on the table. Hopefully you can get, get in a little, get some duck hunting in over the weekend as well. But uh, before we get into the podcast, like you guys know, we got to thank some sponsors of our Collegiate Waterfowl Tour. First off, Kent Cartridge. This year they actually came out with a new load called Fastio Plus, which is a stacked load. And this season we're shooting the two fours load. Um, you can see on the coffee table in front of us a couple of the boxes. We also got to thank Benelli USA for sponsoring this season of the Collegiate Waterfowl Tour. Everyone's familiar, you're familiar with Benelli. Um, can't thank them enough for for supporting what we do and supporting you guys, uh, supporting collegiate waterfowl hunters around the around the country. So, other than that, let's just jump into the podcast. We don't have no crazy introduction music. We just start talking. So perfect. Um, let's start out with some intros. Blake, you want to just uh, introduce yourself? Maybe what you do, what you're doing at UNL and a uh, little bit of, yeah, a little <laughs> bit about yourself. Uh, yeah. So I'm Blake Johnson here with. Uh, at UNL, um, I'm a major in ag, business with focus in finance and banking, with maybe a minor in wildlife management, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, so this is my place. Uh, just grew up on a farm, so pretty much just kind of living up here and kind of went to UNL after that and kind of met all – I met Jake and all these guys at Ducks Unlimited, so <laughs> kind of been a cool adventure there. But, yeah, that's kind of what's going on here. Yeah, I'm Jake Aiken. Um, I'm a senior here at UNL. Um I'm going into education, going to be a high school history teacher and probably coach all the sports I can, typical. But uh, I'm the chairman of the UNL Ducks Unlimited chapter, like Blake just said. Um, kind of met everyone through um, Ducks Unlimited, so we kind of got a close-knit group that we hang out with and stuff, and it's a pretty yeah. fun time. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, my name is McGuire Whittison. I'm a junior at UNL. I'm studying agronomy, and I'm planning on heading back to the family farm after this. Uh, maybe start a scouting business and just help on the family farm. So, nice. yeah. All born and raised in Nebraska? Yep. You guys yes, are sir. From Nebraska? Yep. Nice. Nice. First off, you guys already kind of mentioned that you guys got kind of all met one another through the Ducks Unlimited chapter. And that's how I actually met met you guys um, mm -hmm. at third term a couple yeah. of years ago. Met Jake. Um, and then, you, you, yeah, you we uh, yeah, uh, we were both there. and Blake were both there this last year. Yep. And two years ago, you guys were the – national champions yes we correct? were yeah and prior to that we were also national champs and the year prior to that <coughs> um we it was like covid or whatever so we didn't there was no national champ but we basically basically should have should have yeah. should have won but <laughs> yeah this this last year um we got second to nc state no no shade or anything we love you guys you guys are awesome but it kind of kind of stung a little bit but <laughs> revenge to her yeah <laughs> some would right. say but right. it's all going towards the ducks so it's just a little friendly competition but yeah and for context for the listeners who might not be familiar with uh du and like what the national champions are do you guys want to describe what that is yeah so basically all our collegiate chapters just raise money for conservation just kind of what ducks unlimited does across the nation and stuff uh, we just hold events raise money for land conservation for wetlands and waterfowl and all that so basically um the, cl the college chapters like i said we just raise money and compete against one another just see who can raise the most amount of money biggest event all that jazz and it's just there's a big third term in memphis where we all get together as college chapters and exchange hunting stories and all that and just kind of get to know each other throughout 
I mean, I've talked to people from Clemson, Arkansas, LSU. I mean, just getting to know each other and kind of just spreading our mission with one another and feeding off each other, giving us ideas and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just really just conserving wildlife and stuff and all that. So For sure. that's what I got to say. I would, um, so you've been to third term two times now. Yeah, Jake. so, yep, I went – Two years ago, and then this last year. So, and then what were your guys' like kind of initial thoughts, like first time going down to? I was to mind blown by the amount of chapters um, that came down, and just seeing like how like everyone jived together, like talking about their own stories from back home, and I don't know, it was just super cool talking about duck hunting in Louisiana or those Louisiana Louisiana guys thinking they want to come duck hunt in Nebraska, and just super cool um, sharing those stories with those guys. So, just kind of. I mean, we aren't really um, exposed to, like, southern stories Oh, no, the stuff. accents like, down there, getting, too. Are uh, cold. Talking really. to Tennessee guys. That was awesome. LSU guys and Georgia Southern. We were exchanging some football stories from last year when they beat us. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it was, I mean, it's, it's nice to get out of the Midwest and get around and talk to other people about hunting and stuff and what they do and all that. Mm-hmm. How did you guys make – so, I've – yeah, I hear that a lot of like people just you you enjoy listen, hearing stories, like what's so enjoyable, uh, listening to other people's stories and just like, I, I guess yeah, what what do you get out of that? Well, I guess like especially like with us like, like it's kind of like they kind of live like stuff like you always hear like Southerners want to come up north and we always want to go down south, just because like stuff we haven't experienced like especially like for us we've talked about like going down to hunt like timber, mm-hmm. which would be like crazy Arkansas, cool. Yeah. yeah, Arkansas like hunting like cut down call you know all that stuff, stuff. you see online that we're yeah, not used to like duck dynasty stuff <laughs> yeah. like yes duck please. commander yeah and then you go there and like these guys have lived it mm-hmm. and that's like they're like it's like they're usual mm-hmm. and, like it's kind of like the opposite way around too because like these guys are like we talked about this earlier but like these guys saying like oh i want to come hunt like nebraska and all that stuff and like we're like in the fields like field, yeah, they want to field hunt yeah like yeah. they corn fields like, <laughs> like it's, it's all you do is sit out there lay in a blind lay yeah. out blind yeah in the freezing cold yeah but i guess it's just kind of like swapping like experiences that we want to experience but they have like the intel but mm-hmm. it's super fun i feel like like you say that now and then like even at a grander scale like yeah we're talking about third term where you can actually hear the stories listen and you're person to person but it's like you're kind of doing the same thing on social media today where you're not you you might not have like direct communication with that person but you're kind of seeing through their photos of like mm-hmm. what they're what they've gone through to get maybe put that hunt together yeah for sure yeah because in third this I, I know this last third term we talked to a lot of people and we exchanged instagram's accounts and i still like snapchat guys mm-hmm. that i met talking about hunting and stuff and just i know our ducks unlimited uh instagram page we got a lot of the chapters following each other and just kind of seeing what they're doing and what they're up to and stuff is just really kind of eye-opening and stuff um even though we talked over stuff that they, that they do it's just kind of cool seeing them doing it throughout the year instead of just talking about what they're going to do like in the future like because that was the summer and they were we were all brainstorming stuff we were going to do in the fall and the spring and we were just coming up with stuff and then seeing other people other chapters do that and put it into motion is just kind of nice to see that Mm -hmm. they're doing it for the ducks and stuff so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we talked about third term a little bit you guys get the chance to meet other chapters and stuff but you guys also had just an opportunity that kind of came about last weekend i heard about heard about and i was gonna try this this was kind of like a last minute deal uh last weekend where was we were gonna try to maybe go hunt last weekend Mm -hmm. but just Mm -hmm. with weather and birds and just didn't work out but you guys had a cool event here on campus uh, last weekend yeah so we had the opportunity uh our governor here in the state jim pillen great guy um he usually has a tailgate for nonprofit organizations every every home game day so we got the opportunity he invited us out to the governor's governor's mansion where he lives and he just has this kind of spiel and it was on veterans day so we honored a bunch of veterans and we had a little booth set up just kind of telling people what we're about uh had this decoy specially made for him uh husker decoy gave it to him as like a gift um and we had a little booth like i said set up we were selling memberships and uh these hats that we had made uh nebraska du hats embroidered kind of cool red and white hats um pretty pretty cool (laughs) What, what was um i guess like, how did that make you feel like being invited to that, something like that, being able to meet the governor and, and share kind of what you guys do on campus? 
I mean, I just it I I felt honored when Steve our RD Steve Wilson told me we had this kind of in the works. I was like pretty like oh my gosh like this is a big deal like the governor's asking us to come to his mansion to highlight us and stuff for all the money we raised for wetlands conservation and it just kind of I told the guys about it and they're like what were you guys reactions been I, I thought you were kidding at first yeah <laughs> I mean it's a pretty big deal I mean the governor invited us to his mansion um, and then Tim Ferringer he's he kind of set it up and put the works in it too got us this great big banner with our logo on it nebraska du logo on it and nice. got some pictures with the governor in front of that but it was just i think it was just a great time to just take in like the work we put in and stuff like that um just kind of to be recognized as a nonprofit doing doing work um collegiately because mm -hmm. i know we have there's tons of du chapters around the state but we're one of the top 50 in the country or something like that uh raising money wise and that's in between college and um, just normal DU chapters. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. I th I think in uh, so the first podcast we did this season, we had um, Cam Bolin. She's a coordinator of youth and education for DU, and she she talked about the youth and ed program and Ducks University and how much money they raise. And it, I can't remember exactly the number, but it's it's outrageous. Yeah. Um, and that that program is just growing pretty very fast um one thing I, i'm kind of curious is so campus waterfowl was always start it it got started on the idea of like collegiate hunters weren't being recognized by by the 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 big companies in the outdoor industry essentially um how and kind of going or tying this to your event that you had last weekend i'd imagine there were probably some older maybe older folks walking around what were their kind of perception what was their perception of um just like the collegiate the collegiate uh chapters and like what you guys were doing on campus i mean i think the main thing we had people coming up to us and didn't really know what we were doing they knew what du was but they were kind of shocked to see us college kids having like such an impact on the state um because they're not used they're used to normal du chapters just adults doing the work and I think it was kind of just weird or out of the blue to see us there uh, spreading the same mission that other chapters do throughout the state and then we had some encounters with some people just like trying to educate them on what we're about it's not just killing ducks and hunting and stuff it's what we do conserving land in order to do that in order to keep uh, the environment up to date and everything so I think spreading our mission was just are one of the main goals um, with the older population because I mean a lot of them knew know what DU was, and we were just trying to educate them on what we do as a as as a as a college chapter compared mm -hmm. to like um, like I said the other DU chapters throughout the state. So mm -hmm. I just wonder, yeah, what their thoughts are. Just and I, I'd imagine it's probably probably refreshing seeing a younger crowd. No, yeah, running these types of mm -hmm. organizations. Yeah, we had a lot of people coming up to us and thanking us for doing what we're doing as in young individuals 20 19 19 mm -hmm. to 22 year olds and just taking the initiative of um giving back to everything around us nature wise and environmental wise so um there were there were a lot of people that were thanking us and mm -hmm. saying that they were proud of us for doing what we we're doing and stuff yeah. like that so it kind of felt reassuring for us knowing that we're doing something good mm -hmm. something right for the for the environment so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's talk about, let's talk about hunting. Let's talk about this today. Let's do it. We, uh, can, we can do that. <laughs> um, I got, I just got to tell, I want to tell this story. So three years, so I came in on this, this weekend. Uh, we, we had this plan, what, a week in advance now? Yeah, a week or two. Week, yeah. A week or two in advance. Um, I flew in Friday night, got, got here. And as we're like planning where we're gonna be hunting Saturday morning, I kind of like I I have no idea where I'm where I'm going. Like I all I trust you guys of like yeah. planning everything. And as we're like just sitting around the table discussing, I they're starting to look at Onyx maps, and I'm like, I swear I'm, I've I'm looking at the map. I'm like I've hunted that spot before that we're going on Saturday morning. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> and I started thinking about it and looked at so i have google google maps timeline 
oh, like always I have my sh date my um, location kind of always shared that way I can look back of like where I was at in certain days and three years ago exactly to this weekend I was hunting that same spot that we were hunting this weekend with Wayne State with, right with Wayne State College which is wild and and like just to think like we've like I've kind of been all around the country and I go to all these places but it's like going back to a spot that was one of the first spots I've ever hunted dirt to do the tour and see, like seeing the area again it was like it was super refreshing I loved yeah. It. Yeah. so and, I, I don't know if I'll ever get that chance what, again the fact too that Blake hunted like three days before yeah. that right hunt, I yeah, guess, yeah. Wins, yeah you were telling Wayne me State. the day I hunted three years ago you were there like two or three days yeah, ago yeah. Or, or, on the or time before I was yeah. there which is insane yeah could have crossed paths so, yeah yeah, like that—that that guy was the guy sky busting the whole time. <laughs> Holy cow! And you guys—you said you did get really good that day, right? Yeah, yeah. And our day, I think, our our hunt was fairly slow. We got the YouTube video. Yeah, like we watched yeah. it the other yeah. like last yeah. night. Last night, yeah. Mm -hmm. But so you were the reason for that. That's why. Yeah, I know. You shot that place up before we got there. <laughs> Darn it. Um, but no. So let's talk talk about um, kind of what 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 have the conditions been lately here in Nebraska and. and I want to say, yeah, this this podcast is being recorded on November. What is today? Eighteenth. Eighteenth. Yeah. November eighteenth. So that way, some listeners can kind of <coughs> know what the weather's been like. I guess I can kind of go first on that. Um, so we're hunting east of Nebraska, so especially uh, we've just been super dry. Mm -hmm. Like I know, especially we hunt a lot of Lincoln area around our school, and like uh, the last three years, like we've lost spots left and right. Mm -hmm. But I remember like. Uh, Three years ago, we we had probably ten ish places like marshes and stuff like that we'd hunt, and just over the years, it, like seems like every year, like we go to scout and everyone's like just another one down. Now it's almost just big open water. Yeah, lakes. really, it's no kind of crazy. Not many marshes anymore. Yeah, I know Western Nebraska's gotten a little bit of better rain, mm -hmm. and yeah. we we were thinking about maybe going out there too, just like North Platte area, because that's obviously like mm -hmm. when you think like Nebraska duck hunting, you're like west, like they're right along that um, migration path, but. Yeah, no, eastern Nebraska has just been dry, but um, honestly, we've had some timely rains and some timely conditions that have helped, um, but for the most part, it hasn't been, like, terrible com considering the last two years. Mm -hmm. The last two years have been really slow, and this year we got off to a hot start. Um, I believe it was October, like, 25th. Is the end of October. Halloween yep. area. Yep. Mm -hmm. We had a huge cold front come in, and we saw a huge push in birds. Yep. I remember, like... Especially on the bottoms, like uh, where we're hunting, kind of on the river. Um, I had guys, I had buddies there that were shooting like 10 man limits, in, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. But after that, we warmed up real quick, and it's just Still been stale warm. since. Yeah, and yeah. it just hasn't got cold again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that, that's what I was gonna say. Is just the temperature here has just been fluctuating, and it's mid the Midwest. Like we're known for yeah. weird, weird weather patterns, but this year has been really warm. Like we had, like you said, that cold front, but from here, from there on out, it's just been 60s, yeah. lower 70s, well, upper like, 50s. Yeah, like even looking back at like um, Snapchat memories, like from last year, we hunted mm -hmm. these, this, we hunted this weekend too, yeah, last year, um, and there's snow on the ground, ice. Yeah, we usually that. we usually have at least four four days of snow yeah. in November yeah. by now, and I'm yeah. walking to class in shorts and a t-shirt, yeah. and I'm just like. I'm supposed to be wearing a sweatshirt right now. Mm -hmm. First coat. But yeah. I remember when we got that cold front too, we're like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. We're gonna have a cold and year. It, yeah. it was on. Like we were Yeah, it was on. It was it was like rolling. Birds, birds were flying. Yeah, it was the first I know, couple days. I know my dad back here, he he hunts a river up by South Dakota and Iowa and the tri state area. And they see they said like when we were hunting, they were seeing birds left and right. Uh he'd call me every day, he's like, Birds are moving up north, yeah. so you guys are gonna be having a good weekend and I mean, we'd shoot a few, but it's nothing, nothing migratory. But up here, there was a few days he said they limited out and just watched them. They were in the blind, just watching them coming to the spread and leaving, just kind of mesmerized by them for a few hours and just stuff like that. But we don't really see that much down east yeah, where uh, we're at. But yeah, it just depends, you know, um, because, like, I sp I'd say probably duck migration. We're probably, like, kind of on point from where we were, were last year for the most part mm -hmm. because we got that early push from them. But, like, I think like geese were nowhere close. No, it's late. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, we, we were like hunting. local birds, and I know mm -hmm. we've talked about that. We shot some geese last year about this time, and I don't know if yeah. there's much flying really. Like last year, we were we were hunting migrators on the river. Yeah. And like it was like consistent couple of days of that. 
um, but like this year we're like every spot we've hunted for geese has just been like local birds or like town birds, urban birds coming off uh, city roost. So mm-hmm. it's just a lot different, which is fine too. It's fun trying to adapt and not doing yeah. the same thing every year, but yeah. it's yeah, just, we gotta, definitely worked for it this year. Yeah. yeah. We worked a lot more for it, but yeah. it's been, it's been fun still. We, we're still shooting some, but one cool thing I thought when that cold front came through, the amount of pintails we had oh, yeah. in yeah. Lincoln, We've ne- we've never any we've never seen something like that in Lincoln. Yeah, that one that, that one morning we had how many we had how many we shoot three couple or four. Yeah, but we had a couple of big flocks. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Worked us pretty hard. And we're like, are, we're like, we're all baffled. We're like, are those are those pintails? <laughs> <laughs> they sure they, they sure got were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was good. Are you guys hunting mostly fields, or are you on like those bigger chunks of water that you yeah. talk about? Bigger chunks of water mm-hmm. around where we go to school and stuff. Yeah. I mean. Have you guys field hunted? Uh, we um, we done, we've done it once or twice. Yeah. Just it's yeah. tough finding some public or private land around yeah. Lincoln, but yeah, we're gonna try to probably transition a little bit to field hunting now if it gets a little colder. But yeah. like even just like these warmer like especially the first couple months, it's just tough to see anything landing in the field to get all these like especially like the the teal and all that stuff. Like there's just there's nothing. Mm-hmm. And I I know the geese are kind of moving down down in Lincoln too. I've I've seen them kind of mm-hmm. flying in from the north and stuff and uh, we, where i live and um they're just i, I mean i'm just seeing some movement mm-hmm. geese wise but and we're finally to the point where we have like enough decoys and stuff that we can yeah, properly field hunt. yeah yeah um yeah and thanks to blake <laughs> yeah <laughs> trade sugar daddy yeah <laughs> I, we gotta you gotta tell that story the story you, you were telling us the other night yeah. uh well your duck yeah. boat yeah, yeah so your, your duck boat <laughs> i had a duck boat the moby uh, me and a buddy, actually Colton, um, he'll be hunting with us tomorrow. But we built it in this very shed um, three years ago. And I think I've duck hunted out of it like five times, six times over the past three years. And so it's just been like an endless cycle of like, oh, this is the year, you know. We'll put a blind on it. We're going <laughs> to hunt it out of it. I know it's true. And then it's like, and we don't do it again. So I'm like, I throw it up on Facebook, and it's like just an endless cycle of doing this. Finally, um, the night before we, you Thursday got in. Night. Yeah, Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday night. I was going to go home. So I was supposed to go home at like two o'clock. But we'll come here, like two o'clock. I was gonna go scout. I had my sister scout for us, and then <laughs> Thanks, um, Shay. yeah, Thanks, Shay. Shay. She did the terrible job. What a great job. sibling. She did a terrible job. <laughs> <laughs> she won't hear this anyways. It's okay. But um, no, I traded the boat in for some decoys, which was timely. But yeah, kind of crazy how the time timing works out on that. But yeah, it was wild. Yeah, I, rem- I remember you calling me like. Well, I just got a few more dozen uh, full bodies, and I got some some dive bombs, and I'm like. All right. Mm-hmm. I said, if we can ready to if go, we shoot some. We're gonna look like we shoot some. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Love the love the trade. Yeah. So so how'd the hunt go today, you guys? Yeah, it wasn't bad. You, you can't you can't share everything either because oh, yeah, you gotta yeah. keep yeah. the viewers uh, and listeners like they got they gotta want to learn more. They gotta watch the YouTube video that's yeah. coming out on Thursday. Well, this guy got to sleep in a little bit while us three uh, yeah, woke okay. up at 3 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll get up at 3, we'll go get a spot. Yeah. No one showed up. Yeah, so Casually. we were there a little too early, but well, better safe than sorry. it all worked out, too, because, you know, someone didn't show up when they're supposed to, and we yeah. had to grass the whole blinds, but yeah. it still worked out. But <laughs> Yeah, we don't know what talking about. <laughs> yeah. You guys will see in the video, we had a... We love making blinds. Yeah. yeah, we've gotten pretty good at that. Make I mean, all the public land. If there's anything doing. we're good at, it's making some makeshift blinds. <laughs> yep, hang our hat on that. But yeah, no, it was a good morning. Honestly, um, we, we were, were expecting something very different, not to shoot or see anything. Well, yeah, it's just been so slow. I I got that call from my dad last night, like, because <sighs> uh, we went up kind of where I'm from, and he was like, "Yeah, the birds have not been moving. Like, they've been hunting on the river, and they're like, we haven't seen a speck or." speck of anything and uh, we were just like oh god gave me like, terrible anxiety i know we were like <laughs> oh, we were yeah. like and the condition just weren't right yeah, it was stale no. out there barely was there yeah. was like no wind so. we were we were very i was very nervous for this hunt oh my gosh this morning i know you were oh my gosh we had, my we had Derek on this. here yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but we made a day out of it we did make a day uh, out a, of full it. Day. a full, full, full day a full day yeah. it wasn't pretty but we did it yeah <laughs> And it was successful, so that was pretty cool. But with a nice, nice number of ducks. Um, yeah. You guys, they left early to go eat, or you guys had lunch and yeah. meat for long. Jackson, mm-hmm. we stayed behind and kept the decoys under control and shot a few more in, in the meantime. So that was, it worked out good today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It got warm. It got real warm. Got, we we, we adapted to the ducks. They were kind of, you'll see in the video, they were kind of not doing what we it wanted was, it to do. Yeah. It's kind of weird, but 
we I think they were just they were they were narrow focused or I don't know what you like narrow sided. They wanted to go to one spot. Tunnel vision. Yeah, tunnel vision. They yeah. just wanted to go to one spot and our decoys were not where they wanted to go, so we, we adapted. That's for sure. We had a spread too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That was the most And they didn't want to go to the spread. They wanted to go well, nowhere near the spread. Yeah. Well depend on how you looked at it, you know, because we got some big ducks that landed in there, but yeah. Anything, uh, the big ducks were coming, yeah. But none of the none of the teal. The teal wanted nothing to do with it. No. Shooting though. Yeah, we were you'll see. very mediocre. <laughs> I'm gonna put that out there. Very mediocre. Yeah. But luckily I was I was lacking the camera abilities. So I wasn't perfect, getting no on the evidence. birds <laughs> real I wasn't getting on the birds real quick, so it was, and it was they were kinda hard to see too with all the grass. Yeah, we were our blind and stuff. The, bl- the blind grass was tall, the s- we were sun looking at right in our the eyes. Sun, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those two uh what were they? Yeah. Widgeon Widgeon were right in the sun. On the on the water and no, we're calling, yeah, gadwalls, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. laying around the sun. And we were like, calling and we're like, and we're like, me and you were like, dude, I can't see them. Like, <laughs> I know they're there. <laughs> they're like, you guys, you guys were calling on the off to our right, and I'm like, they're like 45 they're yards out, and we just, could, I have no <laughs> idea where they're at. I'm like, I'm like, where are, where are they? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> they were right in the sun. I'm like, they're still there, and they ended up getting up, and yeah, I think we shot them. So. Yeah, we knocked them down, but made work of them. And I was very surprised the amount of teal we saw today. Yeah. For November, um, this low, this so late in November. I mean, how back, hot it is. We've yeah. been hunting pretty hard back in Lincoln the last few weeks, and we have we haven't seen teal in two weeks. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, barely any. It's and just then, crazy how far, you know, if you go to different spots. Well, I'm sure, it's like, especially with the weather, like, you know, um, they got pushed, and then all of a sudden they just, like, locked up and stayed in one spot patterning. But mm-hmm. it's just kind of crazy getting those little pockets. Yeah. Yeah, and we when we were driving to lunch, we kind of drove around the lake and – we saw a lot of canvas backs and redheads and because where we yeah i mean there was stuff everywhere but they weren't there's constant movement yeah weren't biting us it was even during the middle of the day when it was just me and jackson it was every hour 45 minutes ducks yeah. ducks flying and ducks in. working and it was good sometimes they just came out of nowhere nowhere yep yeah like yeah there was a couple like we're just hanging out we're talking holy cow it like, you, like well, and you're kind of you're kind of in that valley too. So like, if they're below the horizon, oh, under nothing. the hill, like you can't see them. Nothing. Yeah. So. I, remember, I remember you and me were sitting in the blind and we were talking or something, and I just hear flapping, and I look up and there's like at least seventy canvas backs or yeah, redheads above fun, us, yeah. and <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, a little too high for our shotguns, but yeah, but they're fun to watch though. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Cool to see. For sure. A lot, a lot of pheasants too. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Those horse riders yeah. rushing around. Yeah. Oh yeah, That's you guys out. missed out on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had some bird watchers too out there. Yeah, yeah we convoy did. of bird watchers. Yeah, yeah. we were a militia. Did, did we shoot any when the, I think we did? <laughs> yeah, we the, did. Like, the last yeah. loop, we're and like they're they're looking at the other side of the road. We shot somebody. They came yeah. over like, <laughs> going on over here. <laughs> Got their bu- big, their big binos out. So oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah just having fun funny. over here. Mm-hmm. Um. One thing that I didn't know about this area uh, before coming in was you guys were talking about just pit blinds in yeah. this area. Can you guys talk about that a little bit? Uh, ahead, I guess Louis. I'll talk more about that since, like, I'm kind of more from this area. But yeah. um, I guess it kind of depends on what you know. But, like, Ralph Kohler, he's kind of like a legend in this area and kind of in the industry a little bit. Depends on how old you are, I guess. But um, you, there's a lot of people around, especially, like, in Nebraska and the Midwest that have hunted his blinds, like the Kohler blinds. Um, I think it's one of the longest lasting pit blind manufacturers in the company. Hmm. But, um, yeah. So he's originally from around this area and, um, he used to have like three properties on the river and he used to use two as like a kind of like a trying to think of the word safe haven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's just like a kind of cool, you know, kind of seeing the history around here. Mm -hmm. And now, especially what kind of came of that is now you got these, big companies coming in building his hundreds hundreds of thousand dollars pit blinds like just nuts yeah. like i know i showed you guys the video of that one I'm not poker gonna say table the company, not gonna say the company name but yeah it's like a poker table in it fridge a full kitchen 60 inch tv yeah. 60 inch tv yeah it's like those gosh. are like those are like bunkers those, yeah, yeah those it's are like duck hunting bunkers yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, scared. they're 15 like i'm scared to come ground. home to my wife <laughs> like i'm le- i'm going to hide from <laughs> yeah, my wife yeah. for a few few weeks. hours maybe a day weeks. week <laughs> weeks but no but i would say pip lines are fairly common right along the river where we're at in the yeah. bottoms yeah well honestly there's so it used, it's just changed a lot because like it used to be like just a bunch of fields and like you get a couple select ones every now and then but um 
recently it's just really been industrialized like you can't throw a rock without hitting a pit line of some sort mm -hmm. and it's just especially it's kind of crazy too it's just kind of not that it's a challenge but kind of trying to find feeds and stuff like that with pre birds pressure that much mm -hmm. um it just it's a different aspect of things because um especially trying to work the river because there's not it's not like it's a whole river like all the way across state it's just a certain segment right where i want to hunt yeah on but, the east east side but it's no it's, it's super cool the history behind it and we still know the guy that um actually hunts ralph kohler's blind now too uh, the original blind mm. so it's just it's just cool kind of seeing that kind of like a little piece of history mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's cool yeah that like you never would have thought of that to, or anything no mm. Uh, I just think it's crazy how many ducks, like the amount of ducks we've seen. Like especially, like I know we, um, I don't know if we're gonna, supposed to talk about it, but like we hunted uh, yesterday afternoon, kind of like a last minute hunt, mm -hmm. and that was uh, we we didn't shoot anything. No, 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 we didn't shoot. We put a shot. A, we put a lot of a lot of it was full more bodies like, out. It was more one of those, you know, like you drop back. It was like a Nebraska game. You drop back nine yards and just chuck it as deep as you can and try to get a hail mary. Yeah, but um, <laughs> we did not. No. But we It was fun. It was watching. definitely a Hail Mary. I yeah, mean, no. Yeah. We couldn't have gotten any closer to the X. No, I mean, it was the, right the on the X. There. Yeah, no. But um, thousands of them. Oh my gosh, yeah. Every bird in Burke County was there. And we had thousands of us fly right over us and just yeah. did not care at all. Yeah, we were we were we were honking at them trying, we to, were trying, trying to call our them. Our <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for you guys to hear Jake's calling. Yeah. Or when you see the video. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. Yeah. Mine's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I had a I had a faulty call, but I'm not saying I'm a good caller, but <laughs> I got a I got a better one the second half of today. So, mm -hmm. well, but funny. yeah, I'm nothing I'm nothing special. <laughs> no, but even like today too, like um, the amount of divers and geese we saw just on that because yeah. it's just, it's where we hunted today was kind of like two separate lakes, so it was kind of cool. But um, kind of three separate lakes, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. But um, it was just kind of crazy to see like the amount of ducks just flying everywhere and just like, and we still did a pretty good job. But like like especially like the divers. Just those big old wads. It was just mm -hmm. nuts. Especially, like, kind of in Lincoln, where we've just seen, like, a lack of birds those last couple of weeks. Yep. But that's yeah, been cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you guys um, – did you guys all grow up duck hunting? Oh, yeah. I have not. Uh, I didn't, didn't so my dad, my dad grew up duck hunting, and he actually helped run a guide service when he was in high school and college. And then I think he kind of just got – tired of doing that all day long every day so i never did really grow up doing a whole lot of it but coming to college i met blake actually in our fraternity and ever since i've been die hard with him so yeah uh i grew up duck hunting my uh so speaking of du my grandpa started the chapter up here in south sioux city um so he was a chairman then my dad took over so i've been at du events ever since i was could walk so i've been in the blind I remember going field hunting with my dad and my uncle and with my little Red Rider BB gun. And <laughs> you got I, a BB gun? I yeah. The only thing I, I have is a, a little air pump gun. Yeah, and <laughs> I'd, gun. Yeah, I'd be I'd be in the I'd be in the layout blinds and popping out with my BB gun, acting like <laughs> I was shooting with them. And I mean that I kind of saw some of the the good hunts that they went on, but I never really remember any of it. But um, so I've been in DU duck hunting everything under the sun for a long time and that's how I got thrown into the uh, UNL chapter Steve he's one of my dad's best friends so I've known him he's like one of my one of my second fathers I'd say um, known him forever he kind of just throw me in and he's like you're taking over here pretty soon so <laughs> welcome I'm like okay I kind of saw this coming so I mean yeah I've been been around it my whole life so yeah I'm kind of complete opposite yeah um, so like I, we always grew, I was like I grew up on a farm like um, it's good hunting around here, mm -hmm. but like we've always been like deer hunting and pheasant hunting. But my dad like first time he ever duck hunted for real was like with me like a year ago, mm -hmm. and it was just kind of nuts. But um, like he knew like my my dad and McGuire's dad know each other pretty well. They're pretty like they're great friends from college. But um, I guess like first time I duck hunted was in freshman year of college. And kind of just picked it up from there. I think I had one buddy took me out once, mm -hmm. and ever since then I just kind of picked it up. It was just fun, just different. It but was just, hard. Yeah. yeah, like like you said, like I started out deer hunting when I was young, and I mean, today yeah. is last, or I guess today is the last weekend of deer season, and we're out duck hunting. 
I mean, that's yeah. how much we care about duck hunting. Now. That's another point I got to talk Compared about. Compared to yeah. deer yeah. hunting. I mean, yeah. that's just how addicted right. we are to duck hunting nowadays. Yeah, and I'd say it's this year and last year has really changed, or being in college has changed me because yeah. I used to hunt with my dad and my uncle and my grandpa <laughs> and yeah. all the old guys and just not doing as much. But now I'm, like, hunting with college guys and guys my age, and we're yeah. doing a lot different. Like, we're – vlogging and stuff taking pictures and well, they don't they don't like that you guys kind of got the spiel from my uncle earlier today yeah. in the truck how many cameras you got out there how yeah. many cameras you guys got we're like well at least seven he's like are you are you kidding me like he, it was kind of he's not soul. as pg-13 as that but it, it was yeah. really funny i wish i wish yeah. we could go more in depth on the conversation but and that's I'll what we're that. that's yeah. what we're really enjoying now too is not just going out there and just shooting as many ducks you can we're out there taking pictures, taking taking videos and documenting. Yeah, and documenting. We just kind of the environment around us. Yeah, and, I mean, nothing better than waking up and getting out on the water and just seeing everything. Sun sunrise, birds flying, like in the in the cold. I know well, it kind of sucks. Yeah, sunrise. You're yeah. a sunrise guy. Sunrise yeah. guy. I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah. Oh, they're they're nice. No. I like sunsets too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just it's it's cool getting a group of guys just to be able to do that. I know like we started out. I think it was me, you, and like one other guy, and like uh, Furlong or other guy in the background here. I don't think he ever came hunting with us one time the year before. Yep. Yeah. And now the last two years, it's just like and, every day. And now we got a group of fifteen. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, there's like fifteen or twenty guys. Too many. Yeah. It's yeah. getting to the point where like ah, I don't well, know if you can come. Yeah. We can't yeah. fit six in this we went pop that, up line. We went that one morning where we had. You and me, and we then two hose. other guys. Oh, that was awesome. And you we guys were hose. on the other, awesome. other other side of the lake. How many ducks did you guys shoot? Zero. And you we guys could were have had a full limit of comrades. Yeah, <laughs> they little seagulls, comrades. Yeah, they were all over us. You but could have put your hand up and grabbed one of them by the neck. Yeah, but yeah, you guys were shooting shooting the heck out of them. Yep. And we we're like, oh, there they go, wow. <laughs> leaving. But yeah, it's just fun getting out with guys your age. I think and. Well, being, heck, a, being able to have fun. Well, heck, I think some of the best mornings we've had, like we like it would that we barely duck on it. Like, yeah, it was just one of those mornings where nothing was flying or yeah. like mm-hmm. just goofy mm-hmm. stuff going on. But talking about the night before and weekend before and oh, scaries. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it's it's super fun just getting a group of guys that you know passionate about the same thing and kind of have similar values and honestly just kind of figure this stuff out together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure it out alone is like. like Damn. None of us are professionals, and no. just far from it. Yeah. yeah, but where do you guys is it? Where do you guys go to um, try to get better at what you do? Or do you is it more trial and error? Uh, some trial and error. So like it's just weird because like so we do we watch like obviously YouTube nowadays. It's like that's the thing you know. Do you do you learn stuff from YouTube videos? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Like how do, how are you like um, how are you taking like um, deconstructing those videos like to learn stuff? I mean, I don't really like watching, like, those big commercial outfitters just because, like, they just show up and they're already hunting. Like, I like watching those little, like, kayak hunters or something. They go out and they tell you how they're positioning their decoys or tell you how they're working the wind. And that's what, that's where I learned stuff, a lot yeah. from how to, like, judge that and how to set up yeah. our own spreads. Yeah. Like, cause they're not, like, shooting, like, action shots. Like, they're, like, they're filming, like, their whole thought process. The, the, nitty gear, the yep. nitty-gritties yeah. and why they're doing what they're doing and yeah. stuff like that. And I think that's what we're looking at is just why – they're doing what they're doing so we can bring it back and just keep it in the back of our heads when I'd, we're when we're looking. Yeah, I'd kinda like given the like uh relate to like film, you know. High yeah. school football, got the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kinda like something to relate to. But mm-hmm. yeah, that and like obviously just like you know, there's so many people out there giving like tips and tricks videos just mm-hmm. like I mean, you TikTok you'll, and Instagram reels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can learn I see if you I, just talk if you just say Instagram duck reels. five times in a row, I'm sure you'll get an Instagram reel that has yeah. some about I'm duck. So my, time on my dad's about to turn fifty on Christmas Day and he's sending me TikToks yeah. about duck hunting. Like <laughs> Yeah, you know, come wild. on, come I on, mean, fifty year old. The egg rolls <laughs> made today were on. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. yeah. For long, for long, made some egg rolls. You guys will have to check that out. They were actually very good. Fire. And I recommend ten out following ten. the recipe. Ten out this is his first time ever cooking anything. So supposedly he, that was his first time cooking or er, frying bacon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you better not tell that. your girlfriend about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend. Very good. Um, and that video will be out from when this podcast is posted next week. Next gotcha. week. So, yeah, yeah. 
good deal, but keep I, your mouth watering. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real. I'd also say like uh, not only YouTube videos, but like also trial and error. Like we've done a lot of trial and error. We, we have failed a lot of times. Mm -hmm. It just seems like because a lot of depending on where these YouTubers are hunting, like their their situations are always a lot di can can be a lot different compared to what you're hunting. For sure. And mm -hmm. so and even if like even if you are say both hunting fields like both hunting a cornfield those birds in those areas act differently than the of birds yeah, they yep. do in this area depending on obviously definitely locations but mm -hmm. um it's it's still yeah i think tri trial and errors i think we i think we fail more than we win usually a lot of yeah. times i mean today we didn't i mean by no means were they giving it up right in front of our face today no. so and i mean we still scratched out and long day yeah it was a good day though Clogged. no complaints yeah I'm trying to think if we ever, if I've done that before, where, granted, we did leave for yeah. a few hours, but we were there at shooting light until left. Until me, and Jackson. Shooting. me and Jackson. You were there, you were there. The the whole, end. We had I mean, to, we, we door dashed you guys. We came yeah. with some McDonald's quarter pounder meals. I didn't get a five star rating I, on that. <laughs> I, I hope it's in the footage, but there was one time I had my waders completely off. I had my right sock off because it got wet and yeah. we shot ducks at the same time. So Yeah, yeah you guys, might, you guys we, were might, gone? we might see a barefoot shooting a duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that, you, that happened when we were gone? Yep. Oh, God. Yeah, you just so. had. To, I told you guys to turn on the 360 camera. It worked good. It worked great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, ex I'm just excited to see all the footage that come out of this. I'm, like, not, I'm, yeah. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Oh, for sure. Oh, you <laughs> oh, should be nervous. Yeah, you shooting. and Jackson <laughs> should you be nervous. Jackson there's, a lot, there's a lot of shooting going on. Yeah, a lot of shooting. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of talking. Yeah. But no, it was a great time. Yeah. But um, so we kind of to rewind a little bit, you guys mentioned that it's good to hunt with one another being same age um all that that peer-to-peer -peer just yeah camaraderie that y you guys have um now you guys at this point in college seen jake you're a senior yep. and then you both are juniors i'm a senior too you're a senior i'm a junior okay so now my question is what's going to happen after college <clears throat> probably still hunt with each other <laughs> On the weekends, I don't That's know. That's the only plans I got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll probably live other places, but I mean, my dad still hunts with his college buddies sometimes. So I mean, uh, I yeah. don't think it'll ever. Mm -hmm. I think we'll find some weekends and days we have off to get back together and get the gang back together. Like yeah. chat ain't going. We're gonna, We'll get some spots. Me and my dad want to get a pit yeah. blind on the river by our place and yeah. say less. Like I know, I know. <laughs> Brett will want to come up and hunt. Yeah. So we'll have that. Well, yeah, Matt, Brett. Brett, like, Brett likes it when you can just walk in. Don't have to do anything for it. Just sit <laughs> yeah. there and shoot. <laughs> yep. But no, it, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Figure it out from there. We'll, yeah. uh, we got time. But it's gotta find those weekends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta get the. Gonna, they, gonna have make those hunting trips. Soon. Make those hunting trips. <laughs> the eight <Yeah>. to fives. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's kind of the off season for farmers, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get past harvest, it's pretty much, for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. I'll be working all year, so. You get summers off, though. Summers off. Can't really do Wrong on, time. But yeah. <laughs> time with football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can say you're sick. Yeah. Teaching the youth. <laughs> Got a cold today. <laughs> on a Friday. Got a really good cold front. I'm actually <laughs> feeling pretty sick today. <laughs> yeah. We can, we can, I can probably squeeze that in and make that work. But Hopefully my future employers don't see this. Yeah, they're not listening. Yeah. I, I, won't, I won't include your name in the descriptions or okay. anything. That way Sweet. we can't search your name. Sweet. <laughs> this pops perfect. It's a different J.K. Kim, I swear. <laughs> All right. So we're getting, uh, we're, we're getting close to an hour here. That's about usually how long our podcasts go for. But um, what, what are some things that you guys have coming up for your guys' chapter this upcoming year, or even yet this semester, if you guys have anything? Yeah, I mean, we're still brainstorming stuff. I mean, one of the biggest things we're trying to look at is trying to get merch out, because I know a lot of people in Nebraska like to wear their Husker stuff. So we're thinking about getting some merch out, because we don't have very much. But, um, and then we were talking about bingo nights. We still have to put one of those together. Yeah. Feel, kind Maybe. of what we did in Memphis. Maybe like a great gun giveaway at a yeah. bar or something. Because I know they did that a few years ago mm -hmm. before we were in college. But yep. if we want to bring that back, I mean, we can make some good money off that. But our main thing is our banquet in the spring. Um, it's just normal DU banquet kind of, but we just run it all, just like college, all the college chapters around the nation. Um, but the main thing we do is we get a lot of donors 
that's kind of how we make our money. We talk to the right people, bring them back, just thank them for their donations and stuff because they really want to see us succeed nationally, uh, nationwide. So our main thing is just our spring banquet and trying to trying to create those relationships with these donors. I mean, I know every year I've talked to at least 20, 20 different guys saying, hey, plan on coming to the banquet and love to see you there. Um, just creating those relationships with them in order to get the donations we need and stuff to be successful and, and all that. So um, that's kind of what our main goal is as a chapter every year is just that spring banquet, just mm -hmm. kind of being our main focus. But we've been talking, um, we didn't do it this year, but potentially having like a smaller fall banquet and opening it to other people and just trying to get like college, college wise, yeah. like get, um, maybe a younger crowd, younger crowd. Too. Cause our, at our banquets, mostly our families and alumni and then our committee and then the oh, big, yeah. big donors and stuff like that. So it's, it's, we want to get, uh, people our age more involved. Mm -hmm. Cause I know like when we're talking to the Southern schools and stuff, like they're, all college and they do events and stuff college wise like they're like fraternities mm -hmm. and i think that's the difference between our chapter and all the other cha a lot of chapters we've mm -hmm. met at memphis is they kind of treat it as like a greek yep you know greek like a fraternity almost, and yeah. i mean we have a lot of fraternity members in our in our chapters we're trying to get more branched out and trying to get people that aren't fraternities um just to kind of congregate and we actually um our co-ed this year yeah we officially officially, officially. co-ed because mm. when we were in memphis we saw i mean there was chapters that have girls in it and everything we're like you know what like why can't we do that so me and blake kind of started talking to to some people mm. and got them interested and he's kind of the recruitment chair of the yeah. <laughs> committee <laughs> i kind of put that title on him this year so yeah i think we just like it's just mainly about spreading awareness because i feel like it's a lot of people just don't know like yeah, who we are. There's a, there's a, there's a at least a student there's, base. There, yeah, there's a core of us in in the chapter yeah, that yeah. hunt, know what kind of what DU is about. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that are there for the social aspect, and I'm totally, I, I, I love that people want to be in the committee because it's a fun time, mm -hmm. and I just, I think we need to build our relationships with in our committee. I know this year we kind of have branched out and started getting to know each other more because when I first came into it, I knew, knew nobody. So I've been trying to bring people in and trying to build relationships with people like I have with you guys. And we just mm -hmm. kind of create that camaraderie and stuff like that. So I think that's our biggest thing is just getting to know each other. And because we have how many people, like a 100, lot. 120 people in our chapter. Mm -hmm. So. And what was that compared to last year? Um, last year we were sitting around 97, like a, okay. around the 100 mark. So we're, we're slowly growing. And I think we just need to get the new members in and kind of. Ingrained. Let them tell their friends and yeah, their friends tell their friends. Spread right. the word and what we're about and stuff. Because there's a lot of people on campus that are like, oh, all you guys do is just shoot guns and kill ducks. And I'm like, that's, that's not what, I mean, that's what we do. But it's, We also don't mention we're like one of the top yeah. raising conservation groups. Yeah. In the last four years, we've almost raised a million dollars. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's, 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 a whole, it's a whole lot different than what they think we do. Um, just like we said earlier, conservation and keeping keeping the environment where it needs to be. Yeah, like so. I know, like, especially all of us, like, we want to be able to, like, like, I know, like, your dad especially like, hunted, like, back in the day. Like, I want to have, like, my kids eventually be able to hunt yeah. and do all the stuff we do. I want to have, like, three crazy friends that can go hunt whenever they want. Yeah. So. But, and then have the ability to do that, so. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. That brings up another question. Um, I had this question and this was off top, or off the podcast when I was up at Ferris State a couple, few trips ago. Um, kind of, it's a big question, but where do you think waterfall hunting will be in like 15, 20 years? Like you're, you'll be in your what, 40s? Yeah. 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 I think it's be a lot different, honestly. I think uh, the more like we're getting into it, the more commercialized it's getting. It's just it's weird, honestly. Um. Long to Who knows what the flyways are going to look like? Yeah, the climate. Hopefully, everything. they come back well, towards us a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully. But, but yeah, I, I don't I, know numbers wise. Like, yeah, the new the new duck thing that you said the farm raised duck that'll be interesting. See how uh, that plays some of the out. Duck the East Coast, yeah. East Coast duck ducks. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Where'd you say they were from? Like Jersey, right? 
Uh, yeah. So that so I was East referring Coast. to the Meat Eater podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. The that they had Dr. Philip Legretsky from the University of Texas El Paso on there, uh, talking about Dr. Mallard gen- genetics and DNA and, and just kind of the the long story of that. And mm-hmm. and I don't know in that podcast if they ever did mention like when they really started looking at genetics of mallards. I'm sure they did because, um, but it, it doesn't seem like it's surfaced the public until now, mm-hmm. um, th- that type of research. And, and that's why it's like kind of getting as much attention as yeah. it is now. So um, I think that's kind of like, like what you said. It's something that I think a lot of people are going to be looking at a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, and who knows? Who knows what? Time, else. time, will, time can only tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a good, just good thing, or to remind remind ourselves, like, yeah, it's like you don't want it to be doom or doom and gloom and all that stuff. Um, but as long as we do our part today and yeah. try to put one foot in front of the other and and conserve and, and do what we can to to save what we have, um, I think that's all all we can do. Yeah. So and just be good representatives of what we're doing out there and that starts with uh picking up picking up shells yeah. picking yeah. Up shells and uh just being good stewards being kind to one another and um i think that's where it all starts so no but how does that make you feel <laughs> old yeah oh, you feel old already yeah well thinking about 20 years in the future like Jesus, we're going to be 40 years pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> but, yeah, as a whole, I mean, I don't know. That'd be different. I'm, I'm, ca- I'm kind of excited to see where it goes in the next few years. Populations could grow. I mean, yeah, you never know. Who yeah. knows what we come out with. Like I said, time can only tell. Yeah. We just need we just need uh, the Huskers to have a winning season. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. I was waiting <laughs> all podcasts hey, for that. Hey, we're oh, undefeated yeah, in volleyball, though. Yeah, we're volleyball. That volleyball, huh? And so- <laughs> we're pretty good at soccer this year too. I heard that's what I heard. <laughs> Don't forget our bowling bowling team. Yeah, we're dang. yeah bowling team too. I think we're pretty good. Nice. We nice. We play yeah. at Iowa next week too. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully we get a dub against. The oh, Hawkeyes. dude, we got Iowa's number, bro. I'm, I'm calling it right now. Yeah. Win, knock on. But it's knocking on wood. Knocking on wood, but. We'll Hopefully, see. I just want to go to a bowl game yeah. in my mm-hmm. tenure here, but yeah, especially if we go to like the Vegas Bowl or something like that. That'd be super fun. Yeah, but I love Vegas. One win at a time, or if a win at a time. But yeah. I don't know. We'll see. So, all right. Well, I think that's a good kind of spot to kind of wrap things up. Do you guys have any? Um, I kind of give you guys the floor here. Where do you guys have any like advice or tips or tactics that you'd want to share with? with the listeners and viewers i would say if you're a young college student and you want to go hunting just branch out to your local um ducks unlimited chapter if you have one at your college and ask those guys if they if can i go hunt with you or yeah. do something like that i mean communicate i know a lot of guys in my class that we'll start talking about duck hunting on the next day i might invite them to come hunt with us yeah so yeah. just be willing to invite other people or be willing to ask to go hunt with some of those kids yeah. if you're in college I'm assuming most of our audience is probably college students yeah. or whatnot. So just ask, and you can probably find some spots and some yeah. people to go hunt with. That doesn't even pertain to like just like going hunting with. Like I know like a couple of our guys um, in the chapter. We don't even we don't really hunt with them much, but like, like we bounce ideas off each other and kind of like uh, they go out a lot more west than we do, and just kind of like we check in on each other, like how the bird population is doing out there, how are they moving, mm-hmm. kind of migratory status. Keeping tabs on one another. Yeah, you know, just trying to get an overall feel for the state and kind of the hunting conditions we're in. Because we're all we're all one group, so. Yeah. All trying to get the same goal, but. Yeah. <laughs> different ways. Yeah. Different results. Yeah. But. I'd also say kind of just like, especially college students, you know, I know, especially with us, uh, kind of bringing in younger guys. Yeah. Which yeah. has like been like truly fun. Because like I know like we finally learn a thing or two, and we're like, oh yeah. We'll show them if they're like pretty cool guys, but no, just bringing like young guys in, like um, like I know a lot of it, it gets like repetitive, like it gets what's the word, repetitory, repetitive, repetitive. Sorry, <laughs> my bad, repetitive. Um, but like, kind of having younger guys just then kind of spruces things up. Like they're just like I know like we have like four, 
five freshmen we kind of bring every now and then and they just get so excited about any little thing <laughs> and it's just kind of fun to see but uh, it's, just, it's just something new too but then i also think uh last thing i'm gonna shut up after this but i think uh we started doing like a lot more like taking like moments of our hunts you know mm -hmm. like i think this last year we finally started like like we got gopros now and we kind of try to like capture the hunt you know so you can go like especially like show your parents show your grandparents mm -hmm. like especially for me like my grandpa was like a huge ducks unlimited guy so like going being able to go back and like show him oh look at this or look at this video of like these birds coming in and we cleaning up and stuff like that it's pretty cool for sure i mean big thing for me as the chairman of the chapter just don't be afraid to get involved uh, kind of what mcguire was saying just um branch out and if you see see or hear anything don't be afraid to get involved. And I know it's kind of on your chapters or whatever, kind of on them to get recruitment out and everything like that, recruitment dates and events and stuff like that. But, I mean, it doesn't hurt just to go yourself and introduce yourself and, hey, I'm interested in joining the chapter or, or hunting, so anything like that. So involvement's the big advice I have is don't be afraid to get involved. Well, heck, we're living proof. Like a year ago, we didn't even know each other. Yeah. <laughs> now, like yeah. best friends because yeah. of it. But <laughs> yeah, it's crazy oh. how that works. It's been crazy, but it's been fun. Yeah, sweet. Good to hear. Um, well, la lastly, I gotta thank you guys for letting me come up yeah. this weekend. Thanks for out. coming. Well, thank you for coming. I mean, we, awesome. you. we were yeah. talking in Memphis, wanting to have you come for a week mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad we figured figured it out yeah. after some mis yeah. mishaps with. You come in last week and the week before. Yeah, yeah. No, we got it all figured out. Ma yeah. Was able to make the, the trip up here. It was a yeah. good one, and uh, got to hunt the same like like I said in the podcast, yeah. the same spot I did three years ago. Some so memories, was, memories flooding back in. Yeah, so. that was something. So, but all right. Well, I think that's gonna wrap things up on this this episode of the Campus Waterfall Podcast. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in, and I I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. So yeah. see you in a couple weeks. A lot of turkey. Yeah, maybe sure. maybe some duck. <laughs> yeah. Yep.